So what is the Fourier transform now? What is the Fourier transform of the exponential distribution? Well, um, by definition, we integrate over the real line e to the i theta x mu dx. And then we remember that now in this case, mu has a density, which is fx, the familiar density of the exponential distribution, e to the lambda lambda times e to the minus lambda x, indicator that x is between zero and infinity because elsewhere there's no mass. So this is the density of the exponential distribution. When we recall it, we can uh, write this integral using the density. So remember, when we have a density, we can use it to write integrals. So we integrate over the real line e to the i theta x lambda e to the minus lambda x indicator 0, 1, x. And then we have the Lebesgue measure on the real line. So remember, this is the Lebesgue measure. But because it's a Lebesgue measure, and it's always the Lebesgue measure, so then we don't use this lambda, and we write just uh, dx uh, here. And now if you look at this integral, so then it's integral from 0 to infinity. So we use this familiar notation uh, from the Riemann integral, 0 to infinity, e i theta x e to the minus lambda x dx. And these are now complex numbers, but we know that uh, we can use the same uh, arithmetic for the complex exponential function. So, so um, we can write it down as lambda. Um, sorry, there was one lambda in front. So let's put this lambda there. And then we put um, um, i theta minus lambda there. And then we substitute from 0 to infinity e to the i theta minus lambda x because lambda is positive and then this imaginary part is has absolute value one so then the substitution makes sense and you can you can verify or reflect refresh your complex analysis um, and and see that um, that's what this uh, gives you so at every theta the Fourier transform of the exponential distribution is um, is this uh, number here Maybe there's a question. So basically, this Fourier transform takes a measure and makes it a function. Yes, it takes it. It wants to eat a measure. So you give me a measure, I eat it, and then I produce you um, a fingerprint of the measure, and the, this is a function. It's a function on the real line. Yes, exactly. So input is a measure mu, output is a function mu hat. So this is a measure on the real line. This is a function which maps the real numbers to complex numbers. So it's a complex valid function on the real line. Describing the kind of, if you give me one number, so it, it kind of describes the frequency of the measure for that input in, in, for that frequency. In, in some sense, it gives you kind of frequencies of measures, and this it describes somehow the measure in, in variation. Um, what else? Um, Can you also reverse this since it's a Fourier transform? Yeah, can we reverse it? That's that's actually that that's actually what we are going to um, um, study very very soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when can we reverse it? Does it kind of does this fingerprint uniquely characterize the probability measure, or does it not? So we'll come back to that soon. Let's do one more example because um, that was the expon exponential distribution. So it was a distribution with the density. Remember, now we have in for in this case we have density for the Lebesgue measure. Let's do another example. So, so we don't need to have a density to define um, to define a Fourier transform. So take, let's take um, let mu be the Poisson distribution, and let's uh, let's assume that it has a mean equal to lambda. So then, what is the Fourier transform of the Poisson distribution? Again, it's the integral of the real line e to the i theta x. And then we plug in here um, the Poisson distribution. 
Okay, what is the Poisson distribution measure on the rail line now? Well, we recall that for the Poisson distribution, mu b, think about it's the probability that a Poisson random variable belongs to a set b. It only takes on uh, countably many values, so th then we can sum these values. So we ask, okay, we sum over all the values in b, and we ask the probability that x is equal to this a little x, okay? That's how we work with Poisson distribution and on any distribution with accountable support. And that's why we can write it as the sum x in B, um, the measure of the singleton set x here. That's actually what this formula gives us here. <clears throat> so, um, Yes, maybe the quickest way to see how we, this would work was so we write, we assume that x is, um, we assume that x is now a random variable with the Poisson distribution. So then we write it as the expectation i theta and then this random variable x, which is now the Poisson random variable. So we have a countably many possible values. So we sum it um, there. So we sum actually of those possible values, which are from zero to infinity. And then we plug in the, value of the function and then um, probability that x is equal to, to this little x. This is the family of formula that we know for discrete random variables. So what is this? This is the sum from zero to infinity e to the i theta x. Then we have the family of Poisson um, distribution. Uh, so probability mass function lambda lambda to the x x factorial. If you simplify the, this, so e to the minus lambda comes to the front x from zero to infinity. So then we have e to the, this is x. So we have e to the i theta times lambda that to the x we divide by x factorial. So this is actually an exponential uh, function. So this is, um, if you look at the exponential power series, so it is e to the e i theta lambda. If you simplify that, so it's e to the lambda, e to the i theta minus one. And if we, we browse back, so that, that calculation gives us this, and that's the Fourier transform of the Poisson distribution. At every theta, we get this number, this complex number so for every real number input. Maybe there's a question uh, for this one. If you have, please let me know. No question. Okay. Finite example, one more, because I think it's helpful to see. Let mu be the standard normal distribution. So you see, whenever I say a distribution now, it means that I'm speaking of a probability measure on the real line. And this is one more probability measure on the real line, the standard normal distribution. We know its density, the Gaussian shape. So what is the Fourier transform of the standard normal distribution? And um, let's see, that's a homework. If you like analysis, so you need to do a bit of calculus things here with this, you know, the famous pi that appears in the density. So to play with uh, with this or in the lecture note, you can find the answer. But the answer is actually this. Actually, kind of the famous thing here is that if you take the Fourier transform of a Gaussian, so then um, the Fourier transform has also Gaussian shape. So input density was Gaussian for this measure, but then the output Fourier transform also looks Gaussian. So Gaussian is kind of um, invariant here. So it's also on the frequency side. It has the same shape. 